Hello and welcome. You're probably wondering, like so many people are, can an HIV vaccine actually, you know, make the symptoms of HIV just disappear? Mm. With all the research going on, it's a big question. So today we're diving deep into exactly that, the link between HIV vaccines and managing HIV symptoms. Right. Whether you're living with HIV yourself, or maybe you know someone who is, or perhaps you're just looking for solid information, we really want to cut through some of the noise. Yeah, there's a lot of buzz, definitely. We want to give you a clear picture of what these latest vaccine trials actually mean. But look at how they work. The uh, really crucial difference between preventing infection and treating symptoms mm -hmm. and what the science tells us right now. And for our listeners in the U.S. looking into HIV testing, we'll also share a helpful resource later on. It's a... Uh it's really vital we have this conversation just to clarify where things stand with HIV vaccine research. Yeah. There's so much hope, which is great, but also, you know, potential for misunderstanding. Yeah. Especially about what these vaccines can do right now for people already living with HIV. Our goal is really just factual, evidence-based understanding. Okay, let's get right to it then. Most HIV vaccines being developed, the primary aim is prevention, isn't it? That's exactly right. The uh, The fundamental idea behind most vaccines is stopping an infection before it even starts. So yeah, a huge amount of effort is going into creating a vaccine for people who are HIV negative to prevent them from getting infected. Is that classic idea, train the body to fight something off before it harms you. But well, HIV has been uniquely challenging on that front. Oh, absolutely. The way HIV actually attacks the immune system itself, plus its incredible ability to mutate, to change rapidly, mm -hmm. it's made developing a preventative vaccine exceptionally complex, a real scientific puzzle. So while prevention's the goal, getting a truly effective shield, that's been a long, tough road. So okay, to really grasp if a vaccine could affect symptoms, we first need to understand the symptoms themselves and um, how HIV progresses. Precisely. So in the very early stage, the acute phase, someone might get symptoms quite like the flu, you know, fever, sore throat, feeling tired, sometimes a rash. Okay. Then if it's not treated, it goes into a chronic phase. Mm -hmm. This can last for, well, years potentially. And during this time, maybe fewer obvious symptoms, but the virus is still active, still replicating. And damaging the immune system gradually. Exactly. Weakening it over time. And if that weakening becomes really severe, that leads to AIDS, acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. Correct. And here's the key thing. Those symptoms, they come directly from the virus attacking the immune system. It's the virus doing the damage. Right. So a vaccine designed to prevent or control the virus wouldn't cause those initial symptoms. To tackle the symptoms, you really have to target the virus itself, control it, stop it. Okay, that makes sense. And this is where the latest vaccine trials get really interesting because we're seeing some very different approaches. We are indeed. There's exciting stuff happening with uh, mRNA vaccines. Think Moderna, for example. Like the COVID vaccines. Exactly like that technology. It's like sending your cells a, uh, a wanted poster for the HIV virus. Genetic instructions telling your immune system, look out for this, attack it if you see it. Yeah. But it's important to remember these mRNA ones, their main focus right now is prevention, preventing the infection from happening at all. Got it. Then we've also heard about AGT-103T from right. American Gene Technologies. Now that one's different, isn't it? It's a therapeutic vaccine. That's right, big difference. AGT-103T is being tested specifically in people who are already living with HIV. Okay. The goal there is different. It's about boosting the body's own immune response to HIV, hoping that maybe, just maybe, people could control the virus without needing daily pills, the antiretroviral therapy, or RT. And the early results, the phase one trial, they were pretty promising, weren't they? Showed yeah. it was safe and hinted that maybe some people could control the virus after stopping their meds. They were interesting, yes. Safety looked good, and there were these early signs, these hints that some participants might maintain viral control off RT. That suggests a potential shift. It's yeah. the possible future where managing HIV looks different. But, you know, early days still. And then there's the CRISPR approach. EBT-101, I think, using gene editing. Mm. That sounds like science fiction almost. It is very cutting edge stuff. EBT-101 is in really early stages, clinical trials just starting. The idea is to use CRISPR technology, think molecular scissors, to actually go into infected cells and um, cut out the HIV genetic material. Snip it right out. Wow. The potential there is huge. Not just controlling the virus, but maybe eliminating it entirely from cells. That could lead to what we call a functional cure. So let's circle back then. The big question, can these vaccines actually reduce or you know eliminate 
HIV symptoms. Okay, let's break it down. For the preventative vaccines, like the mRNA ones, no, not directly for someone with HIV. Their job is stopping infection before it happens in HIV negative people. Right. But for the therapeutic vaccines, like AGT-103T and potentially the CRISPR approach, EBT-101, yes, there is potential there to reduce or even eliminate symptoms. Okay, so with AGT-103T, that symptom reduction would come because the body's better at keeping the virus level really low. Exactly. If the vaccine helps your immune system suppress the virus effectively, maybe even without daily art, then the damage stops and the symptoms related to that damage could lessen or disappear. Makes sense. And with EBT-101, the CRISPR one, because it's aiming to actually remove the virus, well, the impact could be even bigger, theoretically. Precisely. If you remove the underlying cause, the virus itself, then you remove the reason for the ongoing immune damage and the symptoms it causes. That's the ultimate hope there. This is all incredibly hopeful stuff. Yeah. But you stressed earlier, even with all this vaccine progress, HIV testing is still absolutely critical. Why is that? Yeah, absolutely critical because even with these exciting vaccine developments on the horizon, knowing your status now through testing is just fundamental. Okay. Early detection lets people start treatment quickly and starting treatment early is key. It stops the virus from progressing, prevents symptoms from developing in the first place and protects the immune system long-term. And you mentioned HIV RNA testing specifically, especially if someone thinks they might have been recently exposed. What's special about that test? Right. The HIV RNA test is very sensitive. It can actually detect the virus itself, its genetic material, really early on. We're talking maybe seven to ten days after an exposure. That's fast. It is. And that speed is crucial. It means treatment can start almost immediately, which has huge benefits for the individual's health and also helps prevent further transmission. Okay. Really important point. And for our listeners in the U.S. who are thinking about getting tested, maybe looking for options that are fast, affordable, confidential, where can they look? Yeah, for anyone in the U.S. looking for testing info, a great resource is HIVRNATestGuide.com. That's HIVRNATestGuide.com. They can help you find convenient testing options, labs across the country. Good resource, HIVRNATestGuide.com. Okay, so let's quickly recap the trial results. What are the main takeaways so far? Sure. So Moderna's mRNA vaccine, phase one, showed it's safe, and it does generate an immune response, right. but... But we need more testing to see how well it actually prevents infection long term. Exactly. More data needed on effectiveness. For AGT-103T, the therapeutic one. Phase one was promising. Some people stayed virally suppressed off art. Phase two trials are next. Correct. Phase two will tell us much more about how well it works and for how long. And EBT-101, the CRISPR approach. Still very early days. Focusing on safety and seeing if it can actually remove the HIV DNA. Right. Huge potential, but really just starting the clinical research journey. So the bottom line is we're not quite there yet with a vaccine that definitively cures HIV or eliminates symptoms across the board. That's the current reality, yes. The results are definitely encouraging. Lots of hope. Undeniable progress but no definitive cure from a vaccine yet. It's still very much in the research and development phase. Still, it's fascinating to think about the um, the wider impact these vaccines could have eventually beyond just the symptoms. Oh, absolutely. I mean, imagine if we had a highly effective preventative vaccine, the drop in new infections would be massive, a huge public health win. And effective therapeutic vaccines, they could really change things for people living with HIV, maybe less reliance on daily medication, fewer side effects, potentially reducing stigma too. A future where HIV is managed, perhaps without daily pills, maybe even symptom-free because of a vaccine, that would be transformative. It really would. A fundamental shift. Okay, before we finish up, let's tackle some common myths or misunderstandings. People hear HIV vaccine and sometimes jump to conclusions. Good idea. Yeah, let's clear some things up. Myth number one, HIV vaccines cause HIV. Right, that's a common fear. And it's just not true. These vaccines use like fragments of the virus or genetic instructions like the mRNA ones. They don't use the live whole virus that can replicate. So they absolutely cannot cause HIV infection. Okay, clear. Myth two, getting vaccinated means you're 100% immune and can't possibly transmit HIV. Also not accurate, especially not now. The goal is immunity, yes, but most preventative vaccines are still being tested. We don't have one approved that guarantees perfect protection yet. So safe practices are still essential. Absolutely. And the third one, therapeutic vaccines are already replacing daily HIV meds. Not yet. 
Definitely not yet. Some trial results are promising in that direction, showing that some people might be able to stop RRT. Mm -hmm. But these are still experimental. They're not currently a standard replacement for the proven antiretroviral therapies we have. Okay, that's really important context. Okay. So for everyone listening, what's the main message to take away from our deep dive today? I think the key takeaway is this. The research is moving forward. It's exciting. There's real hope. But right now, vaccines are not a substitute for the tools we already have. Meaning testing, early treatment if needed, and prevention strategies. Exactly. Stay informed, definitely. Prioritize your health. Get tested regularly. That remains crucial. And if participating in a trial is something you're curious about, talk to your doctor, right? Absolutely. Have that conversation with your healthcare provider. And just one more reminder. For quick, confidential, affordable testing options in the U.S., check out HIVRNATestGuide.com. Yes, please do. Taking charge of your health is so important. HIVRNATestGuide.com. Looking ahead then, as all this science keeps moving forward, it really makes you think, doesn't it? What could the future of living with HIV actually look like? And you know, how do we as communities get ready for those potential shifts in care and management? Definitely something to mull over. Indeed. It's a future we're all watching very closely with a lot of anticipation.